Okay, so I've I've done a seven hour kind of deep dive masterclass on ApoB with Dr. Thomas Dayspring. So we've sort of exhaustively covered why elevated ApoB increases risk for cardiovascular disease. But something that we haven't covered much on this show is why elevated blood glucose is such a problem. What is it about blood glucose going above a certain level that makes it so problematic? Well, glucose will interact with the small blood vessels to directly cause damage. We know that glucose, which is a very soluble compound, just look at how rapidly people can stir it into a cup of tea. Well, it is osmotically active. It will suck water from other compartments across a membrane. And that tends to damage the very delicate cells that line all our capillaries. So the capillaries, the smallest blood vessels that are really in contact with our, our, all our tissues, are really exposed. They're at the front line of damage. And so what are the problems of high sugar? Well, primarily disease where the capillaries are most important in the eye and in the kidney and in nerves. That's where they're delivering such a crucial job and they're most exposed. And that's where the damage first shows. But also the same process is happening inside the lining of the major blood vessels, the arteries. And that's where the heart disease bit comes in. So we've got the glucose effect, which is there. But also we've got the fact of the fat. Now, it's the very fact that diabetic type 2 diabetes is caused by high levels of uh, fat, essentially. And atheroma and the process of heart trouble is caused by high levels of fat. That's where the two come together. So you see the provision of fat as well as the damage caused by glucose leads to the problem in the arteries. Now, cardiologists have tended to focus upon the cholesterol level, and that's absolutely fine. As a clinical measure, it's fairly useful, but it's not a real thing in blood. Cholesterol only exists to provide an envelope for the delivery of neutral fat, which we call triglyceride. And that's really the fat I've been referring to throughout this discussion. So that's the energy source, if you like, for the body. But the liver packages it as triglyceride, but you can't put a lump of butter into the circulation. So you've got to wrap it in an envelope that will be okay with the watery blood. And that envelope contains the lipoproteins, including APOA, and that's why it's called uh, a lipoprotein, the protein coat, which includes cholesterol. And so VLDL, which you mention, yes, that's raised about 50% in diabetes. 50%? What other component of the blood is so grossly abnormal? Even glucose is raised uh, rather less than that in many people who develop type 2 diabetes. So here we have a gross abnormality, and we've shown that with the weight loss and reversing type 2 diabetes, it goes back to normal. And moreover, we've shown the composition of the fat, which comes out of the de novo lipogenesis, turning glucose into fat, reflects this, and that too drops sharply to become normal. So, yes, it's, it's an absolutely beautiful process when you see the simplicity of nature working, yes, in a complicated environment, but the processes are actually very simple. That's how nature works, simple, robust processes. It's interesting to, to think about the fact that in this disease state, Often the focus is just on the changes to blood glucose. But as you're speaking to here, there are changes to, to, to blood lipids. But, I mean, is that something that you pause and, and think about, that you know, people are, 
are wearing CGMs and are hyper-focused just on the glucose component, but there is also this kind of, I guess, derangement occurring with blood lipids at the same time. First of all, glucose is a very useful index. It just as a general indica- index of how the diabetes is progressing. But when we look under the surface in type 2 diabetes, it's the fat that's driving the problem with the glucose. So, yes, using glucose as a measure of what's happening is fine, but it has become a sort of uh, mesmeric uh, substance that's diverted scientists away from what's really happening. Now, this isn't the first time that this has been suggested. A long time ago, a fabulous American scientist, uh, McGarry, uh, wrote a famous paper called what if Minkowski had been a music? Now, Minkowski first uh, reported this matter of the high sugar, but the taste uh, was the, the, the thing. He could taste it. And what if he lacked the sense of, of taste? That's a user. So what if he hadn't detected the sugar? Well, he might have tumbled to the fat straight away. That was a point McGarry was making. And... Ah, because it's not been such uh, an easy thing to conceptualize and put together in the way the twin cycle hypothesis puts it together, it's escaped attention over the last few decades. So, yes, this is something that uh, needs to be sorted out. Glucose, a very useful indicator. Fat, the hidden driver. Mm-hmm.